Thanks for being here tonight, guys. We're in our uh, final session of Armed with Prayer, um, though not the conclusion of our prayer lives, of course. Um, again, the next two weeks uh, will be dismissed for Harvest Bash and Halloween. Um, but I'm excited to talk about uh, the last week tonight. We're going to be talking about silence, um, if, we, if you will, maybe the more difficult um, aspect of prayer in that being silent is not really natural for, in general, for a lot of us in our culture, but we're going to talk about being silent with God. Um, but before we go too far, let's open with a word of prayer. Father God, tonight I thank you for this time to be together and to study your word and um, just to talk about talking to you, talking and being in conversation with you, God, and inviting you to be a part of our lives. God, we know that as we read scripture, we see how much you love us, and it's just amazing to me how much you do love us. So we thank you for your love, God. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son. Just thank you for how far you went to be in relationship with us. And so now as we get to talk about living that relationship now, God, I just pray that you would, uh, Holy Spirit, you would be in this place that you would speak. You would speak through me, God. You would speak through your word um, about how important our time in prayer with you is. God, we pray these things in the holy and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So here we are again in our last week. Uh, we've talked a little bit about prayer the last couple weeks. Um, the first week we... Um, and kind of transitioned from our Armor of God series into Armed with Prayer, talking about uh, prayer in our lives. And Paul, uh, earlier in Ephesians 6, talking about the spiritual battle of our enemy coming against us, talks about the Armor of God. And then in verses 18 through 20, which is kind of our core verse for these last couple weeks, um, calling us to be consistent in our prayers, that we would always be in prayer, always be in prayer in the Spirit, always, and then uh, calling the church to pray for him, Paul, as he was um, always, you know, seemed to be in chains or always in these, these places that were not great because he was spreading the gospel, and that wasn't always sitting well with people. Um, but the first week we talked about being with God, um, and kind of, instead of only, you know, a lot of times, you know, we have our morning devotions, we have our evening prayer times, we, we sometimes kind of have just pockets in the day where we spend time with God, and sometimes we just kind of leave it there, and that's the moment that we spend time with God. Um, but we talked about inviting God to be in every part of your day, rather than just saying, I have my morning devotions, and that's, that's going to kind of launch me through my day. I'm going to have my morning devotions with God, of course, but I'm going to invite God into the rest of my day. I'm going to invite him into my commute. I'm going to invite him into my time with my family. I'm going to invite him into my job and my interaction with believers and non-believers and just life in general of inviting God into every moment and how that's kind of different sometimes than maybe just the rut we kind of get in into a habit of just, you know, sometimes we, talk, we talked about how a lot of times we just pray and ask God for things. That the only time that we're coming to God is to ask for things and how we talked about if that, if that was a human relationship, thinking about a spouse or just a close relationship, if the only time we approach each other was when we need something, we probably wouldn't consider that a very healthy relationship. And so we just kind of talked about going deeper, that when we talk about prayer, we're talking about a relationship, that this is a real God who is living and active in our lives and wanting to work through our lives. And we, just, we have this wonderful privilege as you know, he sought after us. Now that we've come to him, we have this amazing privilege just to live into that reality. And then in the second week, we talked about conversation with God. About, yeah, a lot of times we come to God and we ask Him for things. Scripture calls us to do so. Scripture tells us that God cares for us. He cares about all the intricacies in, of our lives, the good and the bad. He wants to know about it. And He already knows about it, but He wants to have those conversations with you. He wants you to pour out your heart before Him. And Psalm 62 8 calls us to pour out your heart before the Lord. He's a refuge for us. Just this reality that God is there. And he wants to be in everything with you. Um, and so, and like I said tonight, we're going to be talking about this silence with God. But here's the prayer umbrella again, one more time. Just kind of helping us look at different kinds of prayer and the kind of the three broader general categories of the being, the silence, and the conversation. Talked about being in conversation. We're going to talk about silence tonight. So, 
Uh, I want to read our passage again um, from Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 18 through 20 reads, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in all of your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan. That the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God, God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Again, I want to go back to the first part of pray in the spirit on all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And that's why we kind of opened with talking about tonight, this reality that God calls us to always be in prayer. And what we're talking about in this series is just kind of different practical ways that we can do that. Um, like last week, we looked at a, pr- a, a long list of different conversational prayers that we have with God. Um, but this staying alert, we have this enemy that comes against us. We have life in general that comes against us. Um, just the, the, some weeks are great. Some weeks are terrible. Some days are great and some days are terrible. Um, just the reality of life. And so staying persistent in our prayer, staying persistent in inviting God into everything is vital for our spiritual life. Vital in our resistance against Satan's schemes and vital for just progressing in our relationship with God. And not just falling into the despair of life. It can be so easy to fall into the, the despair of life because life can be terrible in many, many ways. So it's this persistent prayer. And so part of this persistence that we're going to talk about tonight is silence with God. Being able to be before the Almighty God throughout the day or, you know, in intentional times where we get to set it aside. Um, And like I said, this can kind of be one of the most difficult forms of prayer um, because it takes a lot of intentionality. It takes a lot of focus um, and it takes a lot of time. A lot of things that in our, in our fast-paced culture, we don't always do. We don't always sit and take intentional time, even with each other. Um, we, hear, we, we talk about all the time how we are on our electronics all the time and way too much. Just this reality that a lot of us have kind of, you know, lost touch, even socially, with each other. And we, we I mean, I can't even... Uh, probably guess how much that's magnified with God and just the intentionality that it takes to hold a relationship with someone and and just the time and the the slowing down to be able to do so. But while it is one of the most difficult or time-consuming portions of our prayer life with God, I sincerely believe it is one of the most fruitful. Um, It's been one of the most fruitful in my life, and we'll talk about that a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of prayer. Um, It's just kind of this this progress that we make in our relationship with God. We we know in all of our earthly relationships, the more time you spend together, the deeper you go in relationship. It's the same thing with God. The the deeper you go, or the, the more time you spend with God, the deeper you get with him. And so a lot of times, like we talked about in week one, we kind of spend a lot of our time just talking at God. Um, maybe in this, this moment of just, you know, presenting requests to him or just kind of this basic talking at God. You know, you, you, we haven't, you know, maybe, you're, maybe you're a new Christian or maybe you just haven't spent a lot of time with prayer and God in general. A lot of us will talk about, I, I don't know how to pray. I don't, I, is God listening and these kind of things. So we kind of start with talking at God. And we kind of progress, spending more time with God, and we get to this point where this is real. You know, we're, we're talking to God. We're, we're starting to go deeper in our relationship with him, starting to have real conversations with him, where we understand that God hears our prayers and that God is living and active. And we, so we get to the spot of talking to God. And then we get to listening to God, understanding that in every conversation there are two sides of the conversation that there is a God that you are talking to and that he responds. And one of the biggest ways that he has already responded in our life is through his word. He has revealed himself through scripture. And then there's the being with God that we talked about in week one. Um, Just kind of this progression in our lives um, in that whatever stage that you are at in your relationship with God, whatever place that you feel like, these are all 
really part of our relationship with God. Maybe not the talking at God part, but kind of the, the last three, they, they go on with us for the rest of our life with God. That we're talking to God, but that we're, now we're listening to God and we're being with him. More than just kind of that compartmentalized moment that we talked about in week one, where we just kind of keep him in one part of the day instead of letting just God be in everything. And so when we understand that now this is a relationship with God, we understand that this is naturally going to progress. Um, that we get to a point where we realize, I'm going to just stop talking now, and I'm going to listen, because I know that he has so much for me. And I think we get to that point in our relationships with other people, too, um, th- as we learn to be better listeners. Um, and, and, it's, and it's really important with other people in r- our relationships, too, that we become good listeners. Um, as, as a pastor, I was taught very early on, one of the most important things people need sometimes when they come into your office and they're distraught is not for you to solve all their problems. It's, it's just for you to listen, um, just for you to be able to hear them. Um, and it's so true, uh, being able to just sit with people and listen. Now, of course, God is not a per- per- person that's coming to us with our problems um, or with his problems. Um, But the reality is that God is living and active in our lives, and he wants to participate, and he wants to uh, commune commune with us, and he wants to speak to us. And so the reality that we think about is, so what, what points in our lives maybe have we missed what God has been saying to us because we haven't taken the intentional time to listen? And the idea of listening encapsulates a lot, and we're going to talk a lot about, or a little bit about the different parts of that. But for you guys, how many of you have kind of practiced this before? I'm going to explain a little more about this silence with God and listening to God. But how many of you maybe practiced something like this before, where you've just kind of sat and listened? Has, has anyone ever taken some time to do Is that true for anyone else? You've maybe tried this and it, you just you get distracted? Um, and I, I talked a little bit about that last week. Um, it's so hard for me to turn my brain off. Um, that when I, when I go to be intentional and practice the silent listening, um, a lot of times I kind of have to work up to that and spend, just get, be, just be ready for me, be ready to just spend 30 minutes trying to turn my brain off and get to the listening. Um, and you know, I, and I know we're all unique and all of our brains are built differently and some of us are able to focus better than others. Um, and so this is all going to be unique um, based on who you are and you know, the ways that you uh, are able to really turn your brains off. Uh, but it takes time. Um, and so one of the most important things that I want to mention about this practice of silent listening with God is don't be discouraged. Think about God. Think about your relationship with him. God being there with you as you are, you know, you've set apart this time and you're intentionally trying to be quiet with him and then you get distracted with a bunch of thoughts and 30 minutes later you realize I wasn't being silent at all. I was thinking that whole time. God's not upset with you for trying to be silent with him. It takes practice. And so the number one thing, because I'm, I'm going to encourage you to start practicing this in your life and just see what God does. But don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged on your first day when you, you find it almost impossible to be able to just be quiet and be silent. That this is all for the purpose of our relationship. This is not for the purpose of achieving a certain amount of time. This is not a, a, even like trying to please God and make him happy with you. He already loves you. He just wants to be with you. And, that, and I want that to kind of set the tone for this idea of being silent with God. That you're not trying to prove anything. You're not trying to make God happy. You're just trying to be with him. And that's what's important. And I think the more you practice it and the more time you spend, the easier it becomes and the, the more... Um, I was the, the easier it becomes. When, when I took uh, spiritual formation um, at Nazarene Bible College, at the, towards the end of the six-week class, you have to do what they call a spiritual retreat. Um, and what they do is they want you to spend 24 hours alone um, for your class. Um, and you know, whether or not you can fit that into your schedule, they try to get you to do at least 12 hours. Uh, about 12 to 24 hours of just being alone and trying to make as much of that as possible just intentional silence with God. And man, was that hard. 
Um, and I, I had to do about the 12 hours because I was working full time and I wasn't able to set 24 hours aside. But I spent about eight hours at a park um, a couple miles from my house and I just, I, there was a cool tree that I got to climb a tree and just sit in the tree for hours. But being able to just be with God, it was awesome. And he talked to me a little bit, not audibly, but I could just feel him, you know, mention a couple things in my life that weren't good, that were actually kind of sinful. And he just revealed them to me. And I had never slowed down enough to be able to listen to that moment. Um, and so all of that is to say, I bring that up, is that it, it can be difficult, but I believe that it is very important to our relationship with God. Um, so I want to talk about this intentional silent moment, but I also want to talk about a life of listening. That more than just these intentional moments that we set aside, that I'm going to encourage you to do. The, the bigger thing I want to encourage you to do is to develop a life that listens to God. Very much that, like we talked about in the first week of bringing, bringing God into all of your day. I, I want to encourage you to be listening to God throughout all of your day, whether that's in an intentional hour set aside where you're silent, or it's throughout your day in a meeting with people. That's a rough meeting where you're, you're I, I do this a lot. Um, as a pastor, people will come to you for counseling. And there are some things that I'm just like, I have never experienced anything close to this in my life. I have no idea what I'm about to say to you. And I really hope you don't stop talking because I have no idea what I'm going to say. Um, and it's in those moments where I just start praying. I'm just saying, God, I have no idea what I'm going to say. And so I'm going to start listening to you and this person as they're talking because I have no idea. It's just kind of, I, I, I want to talk about more than just those moments, but developing a listening to God in your life in general. Let's talk a little bit about silent listening. And so, in, in this practice, like I mentioned, um, find time. Maybe once a week, I would invite you to set apart 30 minutes. Set apart maybe 35 minutes. Give yourself at least five minutes to where that's kind of this preparatory time, at least that I found I need for me, and you'll find what works for you, of setting aside an intentional moment of being quiet. Um, whatever that looks like. It'll be different for everyone. Some of us have kids. Some of us have jobs and, you know, different moments. You'll have to find it. It, it, it takes intentionality of finding a place and a time where you can legitimately turn off your phone, be away from distractions and responsibilities, and just be quiet. Uh, I mentioned last week, I do this in the shower, um, that the only sound I hear is the running water, and it's just I'm, I'm alone, and no one's going to bother me in the shower. My phone's in the bedroom, and I'm just not having to worry anything about, uh, about anything else that, except my body's clean, and I get to listen to God. Um, and so if, that, if you like to take long showers like I do, I would encourage you. That's a really good moment just to listen. Um, the cool thing about living in his apartment is I don't, I don't pay a water bill. It's a flat, <laughs> it's a flat fee. Um, but you don't want to be wasteful like we were talking about earlier. Um, but it, it's, well, the point is, it's intentional, and it will probably be different for you. Um, I used to have like a 30-minute commute to work, and I remember there was a time where God said, well, let's just turn off the music and let's just be together. That, your commute could be that. It'll be different for all of us, um, but I know that there, is, there are pockets of times in our days that uh, we can find, um, whether it's once a week or wh however you start practicing it, start with once a week and see how it goes to just kind of... Um, set that time aside. And again, like I, I mentioned, don't be frustrated with yourself. Um, give yourself grace. Like, I, I think sometimes God gives us a lot more grace in our humanity than we might, um, where we might just get frustrated that we're not doing this perfectly. But God's like, I, you're meeting with me, and this is what I want. Let's, let's grow this. Let's, let's develop this. Um, and, so, and then don't get frustrated if you don't hear this audible voice from God. Um, that's not necessarily always the point of a listening, silent moment. I mean, God has already spoken to us in a big way, as I mentioned, that God has revealed himself through scripture, um, that really he has revealed for us everything that we need to know in our lives. Second Peter 1.3 says that God has given us everything that we need to live a godly life, that he has already spoken to us, he has already revealed what we need in our life. But it's just this relational moment with God that sometimes he will impress things upon our hearts. Or some of us he will speak audibly to, and it's this amazing moment. But are we 
giving God that moment to speak. I mean, we, we, we see these moments in Scripture in the Old Testament where the, 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 the raging wind and the, all these things that God didn't speak through all these loud moments. It was the still, small voice in the air that God spoke with. That God's not going to force himself into our lives, just like he didn't force Jesus on us. He presented us with Jesus. He presented us with this opportunity for relationship. But he is going to speak He's going to move in our lives. And our encouragement then is to give him moments in our lives where he can speak to us. Um, whether that's through scripture and actually getting in the scripture, or whether that's through moments of being silent with him. I want to read a couple scriptures uh, for us this evening. The first one is going to be in 1 Samuel. And if you have your Bibles, definitely turn there. Um, I'm going to turn there on my phone. We're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 3. The story of Eli and Samuel. You may have read this before. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll quote this, a part of this passage a lot in my prayers on Sunday morning. Uh, when I have the opportunity to pastoral prayer. I'll usually end towards the end of the prayer with, Speak God, your servants are listening. And that's, this passage is where that comes from. 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we're going to read a decent portion of it. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel! Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. And again, Samuel went up to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Verse 7, Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time, and once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord that was calling out to the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I am going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned that judgment is coming upon his family forever, and, uh, for his sons are blaspheming God, and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. So there's a lot there in that passage. But there's this, pa this passage where we have Samuel, who is kind of being trained in the priestly ways by Eli. Eli had, and his family had been in that role for a long time. Um, and unfortunately, you see there, Eli had allowed his sons to be uh, doing a lot of blasphemous things. Um, there's a lot of context here. Um, but Samuel now, having been devoted to the Lord by his mother, um, more context. Um, and if you read the previous chapters. But Samuel, being devoted to God, now God is speaking to him. And Eli's advice to Samuel, after realizing, the, oh, it must be God that's calling him because it's not me, is just to respond to God and say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Um, and that's why I pray that on Sundays, um, that we're in a moment where we get to hear from the Word of God, and we just kind of invite God to speak to us. And so the two things I want to notice um, in this passage, and I'll read the other two in a second, is that God does speak. Um, in, in our time now, we have Scripture, we have the Word, that God has spoken to us. But the, the second t thing we see here is that He does expect us to listen. And I, I always kind of notice that about this passage, that... God calls to Samuel the first time. He doesn't just like keep talking. He waits for Samuel to respond the third time to where he calls out to Samuel. And then once Samuel is now listening, now God 
spoke the rest of what he wanted to say. And now there are different moments where God comes to Noah and he just, you know, goes ahead and right into speaking. But just something that I notice in scripture is that not only does God speak, but it kind of takes intentionality on our part to listen, um, whether that's uh, intentionally in our lives or through scripture. I want to go to Isaiah 55, verse 3. Isaiah 55, verse 3, reads, Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen, and you will find life. I will make, you an, everlasting, or I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. Now, again, there's a lot of context behind this passage um, where Isaiah is prophesying to the nation of Israel, now where God is saying, basically, just listen to me and you will have everything that I have always promised to you as a nation. And we know when we, we read the history of the nation of Israel, unfortunately, they constantly turn their backs on the Lord. And unfortunately, that's where they are in this moment. But I, I, I notice this reality. God says, come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. To come to me with your ears wide open. A lot of times in the Gospels as well, Jesus will conclude his teachings by saying, anyone who has an ear, let him hear. Um, and it's kind of this redundant statement of, well, yeah, everyone has ears. But the reality is that, yeah, everyone does have ears, but not everyone listens. Some of the best marriage advice I was given before I got married was don't just listen with your ears to your wife. Actually listen to her. She wants to be heard. She wants to be understood. Um, and so I think we understand that we, we kind of get into these moments where, yeah, we've heard what they said, but maybe we're, we weren't paying attention. Or maybe sometimes we didn't, we didn't care what they were saying, which we can admit that's, that's not the best of us, that we, we are not great listeners sometimes. So not only do we understand that in our relationship with each other, but this in our relationship with God, that God has spoken to us through his word. Are we going to listen? Now, lastly, certainly not least, John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 27. I'm going to start in verse 25, actually. Uh, John 10, verse 25. And Jesus replied, I have already told you, and you don't believe me. The proof is the work I do in my Father's name. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My, sh my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Um, one question that I get a lot is, as a pastor is, how do I, how do I know when God is speaking to me. Um, and I think a lot of us as Christians will use the phrase that I felt God was telling me this or I felt God was telling me that. Um, and we have to be careful when we say that. I mean, we are really kind of speaking on behalf of God in those moments where we say, I feel God was leading me to do this. Um, and we, we need to be sure that, yeah, that was God that was talking to me. Where Jesus says here in verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. The mark of a believer is not only understanding that God has spoken again, but that we listen for that voice. And so part of that is those intentional set-apart moments that I want to I challenge you to participate in in your life. Find intentional moments to be alone with God. Um, but I want to... In, not instead, but in, additionally, to develop a life of listening, a life that is devoted to listening to God. Um, and so if you will, I want you to close your eyes right now. And think about, think about your life. Think about the moments of your day where maybe you are planning out the rest of your day or you're planning out your next weeks and months. Maybe some of you will sit down with a calendar or maybe you just kind of go with the flow in your life. What is, so the moments where you are planning out your life. 
Think about the moments, whether they're many or little, that you have a moment to slow down and you are alone with your thoughts. So these moments. What are those thoughts like? Are they frantic? Are they worrisome? Afraid? Stressed? Constantly thinking that you're too busy? Because those are words that I think we hear people use constantly. So you can, you can open your eyes. Just kind of thinking about these moments in your life. How often are you frantic? How often are you worrisome when you're, you're planning out the rest of your, your weeks and months? and Just moments where we finally get to be alone and we're just like, ah, oh, that was so much. That, that, was, that was a day. That was a heck of a day or whatever. Because, again, I hear we all constantly use the excuse of, oh, I'm, I'm just so busy right now. I'm just too busy. Our life is just so rough right now. And I talked a little bit ago in a sermon about just the fact that life is chaotic. And so, what is, what is our response then to that? This reality that um, if we're in this mode of life where we're just constantly moving and we're constantly stressed and we're constantly busy, what do we do? We stop. I mean, the God of this universe created everything and then he stopped. And we know that he really didn't need to. I mean, he's God. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't grow weary. Scripture says these things. But God stopped setting the example for man that it is so important for us to just stop. And that's why in the Old Testament we see that God created um, and mandated the Sabbath, that one day a week that they were to not work because our human bodies need rest. And now in our 21st century American world, our, you know, our schedules aren't as clearly laid out as they used to be back, you know, back in the Old Testament where they could just set one whole day and not work. I mean, our, we're all over the place now. Um, I mean, we work on Sundays, we work on Saturdays, you know, all these things. But God still calls us to Sabbath. God still calls us to rest, whether that's in now one day or throughout the week. And one of the, the best pieces of advice I ever got from one of my mentors is to every single week, to, he, and he, what he does, he's a, he's a lead pastor, um, he will, at the end of his week, write out when he had Sabbath that week. Um, and if he didn't, that he was prepared to do it in that moment or um, do even more the next week of moments to just slow down and just be with God. Last week we talked about this centering prayer of just letting your mind wander in a moment. And every time you, your mind goes onto a new subject, just allowing that to be God. Your mind wandered to grocery shopping. Give that to God. Thank him for, your, um, for his provision. And just all these, these, these different moments of being able to be in Sabbath with God. We see in Jesus' life, when he was here on earth, he would do miracles and he would do all these things. And then he would go rest and he would go and be alone with the Father. One of the most important things that we can do in our lives with Christ is to stop and rest and listen. And it's so interesting to me that even in secular science right now, people are discovering the, the, the wealth or goodness there is in meditation and just stopping and slowing down and clearing your mind. And I sincerely believe that even secular science is onto this because we are created in the image of God. And we are created in this image where God has called us to rest. And so of course they're gonna, they're gonna find these tidbits of truth and realize that our bodies need rest. But as followers of Christ, we get to know that we can just rest with God. That we can stop and process through our life and not process it and move into despair and worry, but to stop and process our life and lay it at the feet of Jesus. And, just, and then being able to listen to where Jesus wants us to go. And so as we, we've kind of concluded our series on being armed with prayer, we've talked about being with God, we've talked about conversation with him. I just want to encourage you to start intentionally having times where you, where you just listen, 
whether that's five minutes a day or wherever in your life that you can start listening to God. But to even more importantly, develop a life that listens, understanding that God has spoken through his scripture, that he has already spoken to us in huge ways. He, and he speaks to us um, through other Christians. The Holy Spirit is always working through other followers of Christ, speaking into our lives. Um, I can't tell you how many times many of you will come up to me and share a scripture or share something exciting in your life that then makes it into my next teaching because I know that's exactly what God was saying in that moment. And it's just so awesome that if you take the time to listen, that God is always, he's always speaking to you. Um, and, it's, and it's really fun. I want to close with reading Acts chapter 8 where we have the story of, the, of Philip um, and the Ethiopian eunuch. This is Acts chapter 8, and we're going to look at verses 26 to 40. This is a fun story. Acts chapter 8. I'm going to start in, yeah, verse 26, that's correct. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and he met the treasure of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kendrake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now, in, uh, now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk along beside the carriage. So Philip ran over, and he heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up to the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He, led, uh, he was led like sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So, beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Well, why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. They came up out of, or when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. So this is a great story where uh, Philip is led by the Spirit to talk to this Ethiopian eunuch. And he gets baptized, he, he uh, accepts Jesus, um, and this awesome scene. But it all starts out when the Holy Spirit kind of nudges Philip and says, go, go to that carriage and go talk to that guy. Um, and I don't know if you've ever kind of had that nudge before, where you're going throughout your day, you see someone in a certain whatever, and you kind of feel that nudge, I think I need to go talk to that person. I think, you know, you just, you just have that weird push to go talk to them. I used to suppress those all, all the time when I was younger. I, I would always feel like, uh, you know, God was leading me to talk to someone, and I just felt like I didn't know enough, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't ready or whatever. But I wonder sometimes in our lives how many of these moments with this Ethiopian eunuch that we've missed because we're kind of either ignoring those nudges and afraid of them or we're not listening. That we are so busy going throughout our days focused on us that we don't realize that there's a whole world out there that also has the opportunity to listen to God if someone could just tell them about who Jesus is. So my encouragement to you is that you just develop not only moments of listening, but a lifestyle of listening. Listening to, listening to God's scripture, taking intentional moments to listen to each other and grow in relationship with other Christians, and being able to know the moments that God is speaking in your life because you were intentionally seeking him. And in that, we cannot help but be armed with prayer. And be armed with this almighty God that we have spent time with 
that despite whatever our life looks like, that we can now have confidence because we've, we've communed with him. We've communed with the one that scripture says, if he is in us, who can be against us? And we've spent time with God. And so my encouragement to you is to arm yourself with prayer if you have not already been doing so, just to spend time with God, and that will make all the difference in your life. Your problems may never be solved, but God is with you despite those problems, and he is there despite the muck of life and the chaos, and he wants to walk with you through those moments. Mm -hmm.